Hi guys, my name is Robert Feranek, I'm from Federal Academy and today we are going to speak about schematic checking but not about the usual schematic checking like is this pin connected to this pin but about something uh, deeper, something what is not visible immediately after you have a look on the schematic For demonstration I will use this uh, our open source project you can download the PDF schematic version here or you can download whole Altium project files here and you can check all these examples which uh, I'm going to speak about First, very important thing, always check how the internal circuit of processor is connected what power rail is used is there pull up, is there pull down what is the pin status after reset? Is it output? Is it input? Is it low? Is it high? Very important thing, which is not visible directly from schematic. So what you have to use is you have to look into data sheet. This is an example of wrong connection. Let's say we would like to connect this power over reset signal. And I tell you what's wrong. This pull up connected to 3.3 volt is wrong this reset chip connected to 3.3 volt is wrong why? because if we have a look on a processor data sheet and we check the power over reset signal power over reset pin it has pull up 100k and it's connected to VDD SNV as power pin and when we have a look where this power pin is connected we will find out it's connected to 3.0 always rail which is completely different comparing to this connection so where this should be connected to 3.0 always where this should be connected 3.3 3.0 always okay why do you know why because it's different level but there's only one thing the second very important thing is there will be current leaking between 3.0 volt always to 3.3 volt because if you actually connect here the internal circuit from the processor you will see here will be the internal pull up which is connected to 3.0 always and when the always power is connected the current will flow through the internal pull up to this signal and the current will flow then through this pull up to 3.3 volt rails and what will happen in the time when the always voltage is on and the 3.3 volt voltage is off there will be this leaking and the 3.3 voltage rail which should be otherwise zero because it should be unconnected will not be zero there, there will be some voltage and this voltage can make some problems on some boards some boards may not boot up properly when there is voltage on rail which should be off so be very very careful A very similar example just very quickly you may have peripherals which uh, use different voltages for example this uh, phi yeah all this interface digital interface you can uh, select what voltage is going to be used in this case for example this digital is powered by 2.5 volts so be sure your digital interface is connected to processor pins which are powered with same voltage Here in this updated schematic you can see the power over reset is connected to always voltage and also the reset circuit. Quick tip about watchdog output. Always have an option to disconnect the watchdog output from the reset circuit. Why? I've seen it many times. Hours spent by debugging board doesn't work, doesn't work, doesn't work. 
because watchdog is on and board keep resetting yeah for prototypes always disconnect watchdog from the reset circuit very useful tip now uh, different chip this one again wrong connection and it's not visible on uh, just like this if you have a look on data sheet from this chip this is actually a power supply yeah for the 3.3 volt always this is old schematic so the this is the chip this is data sheet and when you have a look on the recommended circuit looks like this sleep is not connected so it looks correct here are other recommended schematics sleep is not connected Sleep is not connected sleep is not connected when you read data sheet you find out very interesting thing this is the sleep which says when it's high it's in normal operation so it delivers the higher current in low it is in sleep lower current but what is the status when it's not connected that's what we are going to find out and it actually says here these chips have a pull down resistor internally connected to sleep pin it means by default if it's not connected it is in sleep again you would never find out this problem if you don't go into data sheet and if you don't read how the pin is connected what is the pull down if it's the pull down or pull up so it's uh, it's almost same as the first tip what i was speaking about always check what is inside the chip actually it's very important to check every input pin in your uh, schematic in your design if it has defined level so for example if uh, the input pin is connected to an output or if the input pin has pull up or pull down resistor and you can check it in uh, Altium Designer very easily just click to interactive navigation and for example this SD card drive protection we would like to check if there is the pull up or pull down so I click there and I browse the schematic yeah there is nice pull up connected to 3.3 good if if I want to check for example this uh, different one card detect for example again it's connected to pull up so good when we are here uh, again very quick tip it's uh, it's used a lot place uh, series termination resistor close to clock output close to clock output yeah and uh, when uh, I'm speaking about clocks and output be sure the correct buffer type is used it's uh, very important for uh, peripherals like PCI Express for example and LVDS they use differential clock output and there is actually several types of differential clock outputs and they are completely different they are not directly compatible because there is for example different voltage level there is different uh, impedance so and this is not visible from schematic again so you need to go check and read data sheet and see what buffer type is used on your processor and what buffer type is used on the other side on the peripheral and possibly you may need to then uh, place there some additional components next tip always check reset requirements for all your peripherals connected to your reset chip or a reset signal because uh, 
there are big differences between peripherals and uh, if the reset timing is not met your peripheral may not work and some peripherals they really need quite long reset comparing to others so be sure you you meet this requirement or you have option to regulate the reset time that's one of the reasons why i for example use these uh, chips where i can just easily change this capacitor value and the reset timing will then change next two tips for power pins always check the voltage level and always check the current required for the pin and if you actually can deliver this current so for example this for this pin it's a it's a tricky one it looks like standard pin yeah and uh, have a look into data sheet and here we go it requires three volts it's not really usual this pin requires three volts for the current consumption i show you a different example this one this pins vdd arm in arm 23 in and vdd soc are connected together see and they go to one power supply and if you check the current consumption for these three powers it is like 5.8 amps very important check it because if you can't deliver 5.8 amps in your design your board may be crashing or will not work properly so i go click here and i uh, always check if these pins are really connected to the source so i go through all the pins connected to the net and i'm looking if there is the source why because uh, i've seen it a couple of times uh, sometimes you just copy and paste schematic you forgot to change the power supply net name and what may happen your power supply your power pins are then not actually connected to power because you forgot to change the net name so i go through all the pins connected to the net and i look for the power supply okay these pins are connected to this power supply and it can deliver 5.8 amps perfect another thing always uh, check voltage dividers because you don't want to damage your board if uh, if you set the output voltage if you set higher output voltage you may damage the peripherals which are connected to this voltage so when you are checking schematic always go and check the dividers again the dividers which set the output voltage sometimes happen uh, you may uh, swap the resistor for example or use different uh, equation and there are also uh, some other tricky pins this one this is very tricky one usb v bus it actually looks like a standard pin but when you have a closer look yeah connect v bus to 5 volts very unusual always when i uh, i'm checking schematic i also check the pin description and uh, i'm sure the pin is connected correctly few words about documents which you should read uh, when you are finishing your schematic first document is errata it's a document which describes known bugs of your 
chip of the chips which uh, you are using it can save you a lot of time because uh, what may very easily happen is you spend a lot of time debugging a peripheral which doesn't work and uh, you find out there is a bug and if you read this errata before you would know there is the bug and you would actually know how to fix it so read it always read uh, the errata the second document which uh, is sometimes provided it's uh, called schematic checklist or layout checklist or design checklist go through each point and check your schematic if you have it connected as described in this document if you like this video don't forget to check out our Fedevel Academy website just google for Fedevel Academy and you can find there a lot of uh, free information and uh, there are also some uh, interesting hardware design courses thank you very much for watching and uh, see you next time bye bye